I'm Tamara Kamari. Um, I got involved, I got a call from someone that was evacuating the top farm at Knorruk and it all started there and we just got on the phone and started phoning people with horse boxes and whoever had a box or a car that could tow and someone had a box at home that was carless then we just hooked them up and within I think 10 minutes we had about 10 boxes organised on their way and we had more than we needed and we just started sending them to other places from there and it just all spiralled out from there. <laughs> Okay, I'm Marita Flack. My friend Sonia McGregor and Roy McGregor, they own a farm up at Knorruk. And we knew they were on holiday. And when this all started, we rushed up there to help them actually. And then when I got to the front of it, the traffic department already stopped everybody from going into the estate. So I saw uh, Marie Kirsten. She's also one of the person, uh, horse person. I'm not all, I don't even own a horse, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, but we involved with the arenas here. So, um, she stopped me and said, can I please organize the horse boxes and dispatch them as, because uh, we all in this community, we have farm radios. So I had the information from inside the estate that they could convey to me. And then from there on, as the boxes okay. came in, we knew, or I tried to dispatch them to where they said, okay, they first walked the horses down to Renaissance, and then from Renaissance became into, was risky, so they walked them down to Journey's End, and then we start, and then the calls came in to say, dispatch or evacuate Renaissance, evacuate uh, Journey's End, and that is where I, my um, involvement started, is to be the person to dispatch everything, and then, um, then uh, it was uh, obviously in the estate there's uh, pigs, bunnies, dogs, cats, sheep, sheep cattle, cows, wildlife, wildlife, everything. So we, as, as Bucky's arrived, we then rounded them up as well and as best to our, uh, uh, yeah, as best as we could, as information came in, we dispatched them to the different plots in Knorruk. Then Vedaville started burning and we dispatched horse boxes to Vedaville and yeah, that is how, it, how, that's how it started and then the wind changed drastically and swept through to Don and high riding became risky too. So the horse boxes then went from there, anywhere they were, to everywhere that was needed from out. there and um, yeah, we can tell you about it later and then Cindy can introduce herself how she got involved. <laughs> I'm Cindy and um, Kay phoned me just asking whether I can get a horse box so I ran down to my friend Sam and the two of us came up with her horse box and like Marita said we're dispatched all over the show collecting horses and sheep and whatever else we could. <laughs> yeah. All the horses are out, hey Mareka? we yeah. thought all the horses were out and then the call came in again at one o'clock or yeah. two o'clock in the morning to say 12, yeah. high riding horses, high riding yeah, horses are still down. Owners don't want to, to leave their horses, but now it's the time to dispatch. Now, how do you round up horses that time of the night? I mean, horse boxes yeah, that time of the night. They weren't allowing the horse boxes in. in we had yeah. to walk them out across the N2, which they had then closed, yeah. like, over to Furlands, and yeah. then they had to come here and just look for paddocks available. Yeah. But I must say, when, when, we, when we put the call out to the people, because now, now we need walkers. We can't have boxes. 15, we need, yeah. 15 horses needed to walk, walk out, and I even more. One or two yeah. with the horse yeah. box. So. Oh, you were still you? early enough yeah. in, I think. I no, mine was done at the at the end two. Oh, oh wow. that's why. Yeah, yeah. So we found ourselves at the end two in the middle of the night <laughs> in the howling wind with all the walkers, and um, also at that stage the houses started to be looted because yeah. there was no power in or yeah, to don. Knorruk, they were all in darkness, so opportunities came for different reasons. <laughs> and um, Vita Scola pulled up next to us by the bucky loads, and I think they went in and cleaned up nicely. But uh, the walkers were amazing. They rocked up in bunches to walk the horses over. So now it's pitch dark. The, the um, traffic department closed the N2 and the horses could safely walk over the end to, to this estate, to Furland's estate. And uh, like Mareka said, the estates were absolutely stunning because yeah, they opened helps. their paddocks 
from Broadlands to Furlands to Cindy's. Cindy's got facilities to riding for Africa. The people actually just pulled, eh? Right estimates Everybody. We had about over 50 horses oh, coming so. out the mountain that needed to go somewhere. We yeah. had eight at our property. There were 28 horses at, at Broadlands at one stage. Um, my friend Cherie had about 12 or something by her. There was a um, few there. Cart horse was amazing. They were up there helping evacuate ponies that have never boxed, just putting them into boxes. Um, they had a, a, quite a few horses by them. I dropped um, most of mine at. At Cartos, yeah, at Cartos yeah. had quite a lot because they've got the facilities, they were housing quite a lot of horses, um, they were brilliant. Um, so yeah, it was quite a night of panic, but everybody pulled through and everybody helped every horse and every cat, dog, everything was removed from all properties and all animals from the mountain was luckily safe. Even the wild buck, someone went up, saw where they were, took a fire bucky, cut open the fences and they managed to get out. And they all returned the next day, so they're all safely home. And then obviously the next day, driving up there, um, you know, where, it, where it previously was green and you saw sheep moving and the wild buck walking around, eating. Um, every time I drove up to Idiom Wines, you know, I would see these beautiful Bontebokke and everything out of the zebras. And now their whole property is just black. No feed left, no grazing nothing you see a buck here or there but you don't really see them because there's nothing for them to eat but um so we obviously thought that okay let's get some people to just donate some food for these animals you know they're going to come back home it's all fair and well they've not been evacuated but they're all going to come back home to burnt down fences burnt down properties burnt down grazing areas um, I mean, friends of mine took their two horses home and then couldn't keep them where they normally graze because there was no fences up, so they had to put them all in a camp together. So the, the strain on that camp from previously housing one horse and now having to house four horses for whatever time it takes them to build up their fence line, you know, we're all struggling with grazing already and the strategy, tragedy just made it even worse because now these horses are all camped together eating up all the grass that they had and those people now have to buy in hay so we started a bit of a hay drive to kind of help the wild animals as well as the you know pampered ponies that now all of a sudden don't have any grazing and left and the sheep and the, like everybody that basically needs yeah, we, we, we help we trying got to help bird seeding farmers pulled in from Caledon yeah they pulled in from we received um, many donations from the town, yeah. you know, money the donations SA's, went straight to the feed suppliers. The feed suppliers pulled in yeah. big time. SA Horse Feeds have been amazing, yeah. they sponsored almost 10 tons 10 worth tons of, of feed, feed that's still on its way. Yeah. Um, 200 bales from them. Yes, sure. And Bucky, there was a truckload of... There was big bales of teff that Lucerne arrived. And Lucerne teff and um, That's all gone to the wild animals, they get fed at three different feeding points daily. Um, it really they are so grateful because they also obviously you come home to your whole property burning you don't think what am I feeding my animals tomorrow morning and I think this has just been amazing that people have come together and are trying to help those people um, even if they didn't lose their houses you know their animals did and people that had their barns Sonia and them had their barns just wet completely from top to bottom and for the non-horse people, I mean, if you don't understand, Lucerne that gets wet can't be reused because it never dries out enough for it to be healthy for the animals again. So they had to basically get rid of their whole stock. And so they have about 12 horses there Yeah, that easy. had to come home to no food. Um, and them being on holiday, it was difficult for them to be here and they were on their way back. Um, so with the community's sponsorship, we've managed to stock them with food so that their horses had food to come back home to. Um, and it's just been it's been a great drive yeah. from there. And there's some alpacas up in high riding who had their whole property almost burnt down. Um, so we're supplying them with feed. And yeah, yeah. I think it was a it was a it was thrown. In, I think the whole community was thrown in the deep end, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs>